Hi everybody. I hope you've had a good week. I certainly have. It's been very busy. Here in Southern California, it's been uh, hot, really, really hot. So right now I've got the air conditioning on as well as uh, trying to battle the heat. Anyway, nice to see everybody. I hope you enjoyed video number one. Uh, I think I'll get better at doing the videos as we go along. Who's here today? Who do I see in my magic mirror? Ah, there's Oscar. I see Oscar. Oh, and Anna from Victoria in Canada, where I used to live. There's Jamal and John and Louise. Oh, I see... Jocelyn, or, oh, excuse me, Joellen, not Jocelyn, it's Joellen from Maryland. She's a lady who is going to be a terrific Back to Basics piano teacher. She loves it already. And I see Galena from New Jersey and Christine and Claire. There's Juan Lee and our newest teacher trainee, Nancy. Nancy's from Tennessee. And there is Tanjeed. Thank you, Tanjeed, for putting up your picture. Now we know what you look like, and you've been very busy with the piano, I see. And I see Ariana, our Back to Basics piano teacher from California. Welcome, Ariana. Welcome, everybody. I hope you enjoy today's special book one. It won't be long before we get to book 10. These videos go quickly and so does your practicing when you have the books and um, so does time. Time flies. I've trained a lot of teachers to teach this piano method and they're still doing it. Most of them are in Canada, a few in the United States, but um, like you, they're interested to learn new things. And that's good. We should be always interested to learn new things. Uh, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel because that's where you're going to find the Back to Basics Piano Method videos. All of them will be there. I put them on so I won't have to do them again. So on YouTube, on my channel, uh, click like, like and subscribe. If you are subscribing to my music, the Back to Basics videos will automatically come up. Um, you will get an automatic reminder whenever there is a, a new video. Look for, and you better write this down, look for the music of Marlene Moore. The music of Marlene Moore. All of the Back to Basics videos are in there with my music. And I do hope that you will subscribe so it makes it a lot easier. Um, also, take some time to listen to my original music. Tell me how you like it. Um, there's about 12 pieces on there now. So I've been very busy over the last few years doing those. Uh, hardly ever time to put another one up. But uh, that's, that's the way we should be. Better busy than bored with this... Um, coronavirus stuff. I keep hearing how people are bored. I'm never bored. I think if you're always busy doing things that you like, you're never bored. At least I'm not. All right. I wanted to go ahead today and review what is called the historical approach because it is what Back to Basics is based upon. And that is the idea of how music has evolved since the beginning of time. And in this uh, way, I'm speaking of Western music. Eastern music is another whole cup of tea and other kinds of music. I'm speaking of Western music, uh, classical music, because that is what this teaching method is based upon, is Western music, Bach, Beethoven, and the boys. And a few girls, too. Anyway, um, it's not hard, this historical approach, but it's, uh, it's basic. And that's why I called this piano method Back to Basics. In our auditory learning, and that's what the piano is, it's auditory learning, 
the first thing that evolved from the beginning of time, as far as the listening part, the ear training, was this. Can you all read that? Rhythm. Rhythm came first. That was the first one. Rhythm. Drums. Our ancestors banged on drums and rocks and sticks and whatever they could get for rhythm. That was how we evolved musically. That was the first thing. So in your Back to Basics books, that's what is first. Rhythm. Rhythm is first for the auditory learning. The second thing in your auditory ear training is melody. Melody is what evolved second. And there no, were no such things as pianos in those days. That was all singing. La, 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 la. I can't sing, but you'll get used to it. It's pretty awful. A third thing that evolved was harmony. And it was a long time before harmony evolved because it just did. There were rhythms on sticks and stones. Then it was melody. And after that, it was harmony. beginning in Western music it was, and I'm talking about beyond medieval music, it was um, in box time, contrapuntal harmony. Contrapuntal meaning it really wasn't chunky chords the way we know them, the way it wasn't put together. It was polyphony. You can look that up if you like. That was kind of different from what we hear now. That's why Bach is so popular, because the left hand is so rich. Um, he didn't invent harmony, but um, he made it rich, very rich. And then Beethoven took it a step further. I love harmony. I love all aspects of music. Do you? I certainly do. Okay, then later on, the monks um, got into the act, the Roman Catholic monks. And that is why we have visual notation now. First of all, there was sound, and, and they were they were singing. La, 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 la. They, that's what the, they could do. They could sing. And their, their instruments, um, the organ and, and harpsichord and the other things, they would make those sounds. But not not too many knew what to do with those sounds it was like sing here la 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 okay that was a good guess there was nothing specific nothing written down but um the 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 monks invented those square looking neumes and it gradually invented the treble and bass clef the grand staff to as we know it today because they wanted to be able to say, well, what exactly is that? La, that where, where is that? We need to know. So where was the sound? The sound was what came next in the um, visual note reading idea of how this evolved. Next, the, the, the rhythm came. They, they invented the neumes. Eventually that became notes. And then the rhythm happened. Whatever the rhythm happened to be. And rhythms got very, very sophisticated. So it was sort of sing like this. La, 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 la. They could now kind of guess where that was a little better. They had the rhythm. The symbols were last. The visual symbols as we know them today called notes, lines and spaces and notes were the symbols. The symbols came last in our history. So in, in Back to Basics, as far as the sight reading goes, 
we have got this identification through the sound first. Where's the note? Where's this note? There it is. And then the rhythm. Whatever the ry rhythm happens to be. And then the actual symbol. Here is this symbol. This one lives here. And that is the stand that um, the stand that uh, I take with the Back to Basics piano method. Everything is based on that, always, always, for auditory training, rhythmic patterns first, melody second, harmony third. For visual note reading, the identification through sound is first, rhythms second, and the symbols, the musical symbols are last because that's what was developed last. So that's what we do last. Um, we left off in our book one at um, Jump Jump Sit and the idea that the music goes in my ears, up to my brain, then down to my hands, which help me to play my piano. And we left off at Jump Jump Sit for the auditory portion. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play the rest of the pieces in the book and talk about them and then come back to the visual ones, which are the visual pages, because that's a completely different cup of tea. So Run Pony. now the accented note that the hand is going down followed by two staccato notes which are played with a wrist staccato and I think I mentioned before children will not um, play wrist staccato right away they will do this they'll have a whole arm staccato and that's okay that's perfectly fine to do that keep reminding them keep reminding them that it is a wrist staccato. So we've got down and then two of them. Just watch my hand. So when you play for the child, always do that. Always have the wrist staccato and they will eventually copy you. Because that's what rote pieces are all about. It's that the child copies you for now. Eventually, there are there is no such thing as rote piece or sight piece. It's just a piece. But for now, they're divided. For the first uh, three books, sometimes four books, they're divided. Don't forget to ask the children to color the pictures. It makes their, their book a little nicer. Now... This is the first piece, Turtle Walking is the first rope piece in which we're not bouncing all over the place. It is the first legato. Legato is played this way. If you take your finger and move your finger back a little bit and roll forward, roll the finger forward. That's the legato we're using here. Later on, we'll talk about wrist circles for legato, but now it's just a little finger roll, like this. Roll up the finger. Tim Horton's Roll Up the Rim to Win. Well, this is Roll Up the Finger. Gives a nice legato, because children want to do it like this. Which disconnects all of the sounds. And you really can't say to a three-year-old, don't disconnect the sound. They don't know what you're talking about. That's too hard for them. So we show them. Hang on to that sound. Rock the wrist forward. Roll the finger. Hang on to the sound as long as you can. Turn, tall, walk, king, turn. Walking, turtle walking, turtle walking. Turtles are very slow, so get that idea of slow and 
hearing the turtle on the skateboard. He's not doing any kind of jumping. This time I'm just going to play through it. Just listen and watch what my hand does. And in that way, we're connecting the sounds, which is what legato is all about. And that's the end of the right hand um, exercises. The children see them as pieces, and they are. I mean, peanut butter is peanut butter. The left hand peanut butter is the next one, the same as the right hand, but it's down here. Right hand up on the C, above middle C. Left hand on the C, down below middle C peanut butter. Uh, we had a, a beautiful squirrel when we lived in Los Angeles and he used to come every day for, are you ready for this? Peanut butter. My husband, we gave him nuts, but my, my husband used to put a little bit of peanut butter on a cracker. He just loved that. That was his very favorite. So you could talk about stuff like that before you go to teach a piece. Um, it makes this thing called a motivational introduction much more interesting, um, I think, than just say, okay, play the piece. It, we, we need to be enthusiastic and interesting and motivational about what we're going to do. So peanut butter it is. You can say, do you like peanut butter? The child might say, no, I'm allergic to peanut butter. That's good to know. That's good to know. So, um, yes, don't serve peanut butter at, uh, at the recitals. Not a good idea. Here we go. Peanut butter left hand. Staccato. Wrist staccato again. <laughs> several, 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 several dozen um, tries at it, and they come back the next week and it's perfect, give them a sticker. Give them a sticker on that. Tell them that's peanut butter. They don't have to know the name of these notes yet. They don't have to know that. I'm, they're not really interested yet. If they're young, even the older ones, they're not that interested. They want the one note at a time or a grouping of notes at a time. Butterfly, left hand. <laughs> Butterflies. I usually wear my t-shirt that has uh, butterflies all over it the day I'm going to teach butterfly. Here's a spot on their page to make some little butterflies. Uh, a story about how a butterfly develops from the cocoon might be interesting. Have Again, have the child ride, uh, uh, ride on your hand. Oh, and I forgot one technique that's very interesting. This is called a super learning technique that I learned through um, a course I took one time on super learning. Uh, while you're playing the piece, have the child look out the window or stare at a rose or look at somewhere else in your studio. Uh, apparently there's something where if they're focusing on something else, the brain uh, allows this thing, this new thing in much faster. So I've tried it and it really works, especially with children who, whose rhythm is not that great. If they hear it and they're not even looking, I used to have them just look out the window. I'd say count how many cars you can see. It worked beautifully. So have fun with butterfly, hopping. Jump, jump, sit. Uh, again, at 
it's the same as the right hand, except they're learning with the left hand. Run pony. Children like these pieces. They're predictable, they're easy, and here's turtle. What you now know is the finger roll. It probably has another name. Okay, that's as far as I'm going to go because next week uh, we're going to start the uh, other pieces that are not uh, done in that pattern. They, they have a unique way too. So how do we teach these, these little notes? Well, in the beginning there's just one note. Now we're up to three. And it doesn't matter if some notes are black and some are white. That's what children know at this age, that some notes are black and some are white. It doesn't matter. What we need to do though, is to reinforce that. And the best way is flashcards. I bought these flashcards. Um, they are actually playing cards, but they're blank. And I got them on Amazon. They're, they're, they're great. Um, I wrote these on them today. You can use them for anything. You just have to use the black magic marker and it works beautifully. Okay. So, I hope that you have questions. If you haven't joined our Back to Basics Piano Method Facebook group, I hope you will. Um, I hope that you will subscribe to the video, video number two and all of the rest of them. There's going to be a lot of them. And uh, I hope that uh, you, you join our Facebook group and meet all of the other people that are learning how to teach the Back to Basics Piano Method. Um, I'm hoping that you ask questions. I'm hoping that you give a lot of comments uh, to help newer teachers or advanced pianists that um, want to become piano teachers because they haven't had the experience that you've had. And it's good to share your knowledge. So fire away, ask your questions and Put up pictures of yourself. Very soon, um, we're going to have a recital. And after you have uh, all of your Back to Basics books, and, and you've had time to learn some of the pieces in them, we're going to have a recital. I'll get you to choose one piece, whichever piece you want, maybe book six or book seven, and uh, we'll have a recital and talk about that. Well, we don't criticize. We, we just do positive reinforcement. So that should be fun. Okay, guys. I'll see you next week. Bye.